to another GCSE economics video with me, Mr. Goff, for mrgoff.com. This video will focus on analysing the effects of monetary policy. There are two key monetary policy choices. We can either raise interest rates to help control prices and improve the balance of payments, or we can lower interest rates to promote employment and economic growth. Raising interest rates hopes to improve price stability and lead to a better balance of payments through lower borrowing, increased saving, reduced disposable income for mortgage holders, increased foreign investment, and lower asset prices. We're going to take a look at each of these in more detail now. As interest rates rise, the cost of borrowing increases. This reduces borrowing by consumers which decreases demand because people won't be borrowing in order to finance their spending. This helps to reduce the problems of demand pull inflation. Higher interest rates also reduce the amount of borrowing by firms and they increase the opportunity cost of investing using their own profits. This leads to less investment in capital goods, decreasing demand in this area and having a similar effect on demand pull inflation. As demand falls, Demand for expensive imported goods may fall faster, improving the balance of payments. As interest rates increase, the reward for saving increases. This leads to more people saving and less people spending. This reduces demand and helps to keep prices down. A large number of households in the UK have mortgages that are on a floating rate. This means they vary as the bank rate changes. As interest rates increase, mortgage holders pay more interest and have less money to spend at the end of the month, that is, less disposable income. This decreases demand and helps to keep pressure off prices. If interest rates in the UK rise in comparison to rates in other countries, then foreign investors will want to buy pounds in order to invest them in the UK and take advantage of that higher interest rate. This causes the UK's currency to rise in value. This makes imports cheaper. This helps to reduce cost push inflation by keeping costs down for firms that import some of their supplies from overseas. We'll take a deeper look at how this works in a later unit on exchange rates. As interest rates rise and the reward for saving increases, firms and individuals are more likely to prefer saving to investing in assets like housing. This can lead to a reduction in house prices. When this happens, we can see a lowering in consumer confidence and therefore a lowering in demand as consumers are less willing to spend money. And once again, this lower demand helps to keep prices stable. The alternative action to take is to lower interest rates in the hopes of generating increased employment and economic growth. This might happen through higher borrowing, decreased saving, increased disposable income for mortgage holders, decreased foreign investment, and higher asset prices. Let's take a look at each of these in more detail. As interest rates decrease, the cost of borrowing decreases as well. This leads more consumers to borrow money, and this finances greater demand. Firms increase their output to match this increased demand, and to do this, they require additional workers. So you can see that it's meeting both the goals of economic growth with additional output and of lower unemployment. As interest rates decrease, so too does the reward for saving. This will lead less people to save, meaning more people spend. This leads to an increase in demand, which once again sees firms increase output to match, generating jobs as they increase that output. With lower interest rates, mortgage holders now have lower payments to make. This gives them more disposable income and increases demand Firms then increase output to meet that demand and in the process generate more jobs. If interest rates are lower in the UK than in other countries, less people will want to invest in the UK. This will decrease the demand for and value of the pound. This will lead to cheaper exports and more expensive imports, increasing the total demand for UK produced goods. This leads to firms matching this increased demand with increased output and in the process generating further jobs. As interest rates fall and the reward for saving decreases, 
Firms and individuals are more likely to invest in assets like housing. This can lead to house prices increasing. As homeowners feel more wealthy, it raises their consumer confidence and therefore raises demand. Then we have the same effect of firms increasing their output to match this demand and generating new jobs as they do. That brings us to the end of this video analysing the effects of monetary policy. Join me in the next video when we'll be evaluating who it affects most and why some of these effects may not turn out exactly as we plan. Use the resources at mrgoff.com to help you revise economics. And until next time, it's bye for now.